Hi there, guys. We're doing matrix transformations of sets of points here. This is building up to the exercise 9E in the HLAI Oxford book. Um, this is, so we're going to do example 7 and example 8. And I've done a previous video on, on how to come up with these matrix transformations. And now I'm just going to do the, um, the example questions. Now, I'm going to do this in conjunction with looking at the formulas which are given in our formula booklet as well. So again, that, these are the ones which we talked about in the previous video. OK, so um, let's look at example seven. So example seven from the book um, asks us to write down a matrix that represents a rotation of 45 degrees anti-clockwise about the origin, given that cos of 45 degrees equals sine of 45 degrees equals one over the square root of two. OK, so that's just an exact ratio which they're pulling on there. And let's have a look at which one of the formulas we're going to take. So we're looking for an anti-clockwise rotation. So that's the penultimate formula here, the cos theta minus sine theta, sine theta, cos theta. So I've just taken this as well. So for part A here, we can see that we've got cos theta minus sine theta and sine theta cos theta. Okay, and now when we put in the 45 degrees, that's obviously going to give us 1 over the square root of 2, minus 1 over the square root of 2, 1 over the square root of 2, and 1 over the square root of 2. Not difficult. Okay, that should say 2 there, right. Okay, so that's the first part done. The second part says write a matrix which uh, represents a horizontal stretch of scale factor 2. Check that one out again. Horizontal stretch is the second formula here. So that's the one which we're going to use. So for part B, pretty straightforward. I'm just going to replace that K by the square root of 2. So those are two pretty straightforward marks. Now for part C, it says, hence, find the image of 2, 3 after a rotation anti-clockwise about 0, 0. This matrix here. So we'll need to apply that matrix. So the 1 over the square root of 2 minus 1 over the square root of 2. And over 1 over the square root of 2 and one over the square root of two there as well. So that's applying this matrix here to a particular point. And then if we need to do stretch, horizontal stretch for scale factor of, two, of square root of two, we'll need to apply this matrix again. So we'll do this first, and then we'll apply this matrix transformation to the front again. So matrix transformations will always go to the front. So we work from the right-hand side outwards the left hand side here strangely so let's just put that zero zero one there now actually it doesn't really matter which way around you do this matrix multiplication in the book they're suggesting that you do this first and then do this it kind of makes sense because we're applying this matrix first at this point and then we're applying this one so they've put some extra brackets around like this and uh, now we actually just have to do it so this times this gives us um, two lots of one over square root of two, take away three lots of one over square root of two, le leaves us with minus one over the square root of two, minus one over the square root of two, and two lots of this and three lots of this, that's only this and this, added together gives us five lots, of one over the square root of two, and now that's, that's, our 45 degree rotation applied to two, two, three. Now we need to apply this matrix. So we're gonna do square root two, zero, zero, one, which is pretty straightforward because we're saying two lots of this and no lots of this. It's gonna give us, sorry, square root of two lots of this, which will give us minus one. And then we're gonna do this times by this and sum together so that it only leaves us with one times the five over the square root of five. The square root of two, so that's pretty straightforward actually. 
Okay, um, by the way, some of you might know that one over the square root of two, when you times by root two over root two to rationalize the denominator, will give us the square root of two over two. And of course, that's what the calculator gives you when you put in a sine of 45 or cosine of 45 as well. So um, some people might wish to rationalize the denominator, but this will be acceptable as a final answer here, unless they're asking you to rationalize the denominator, in which case, put it into your calculator and press equals. Or if it's not a calculator paper, times the top and the bottom of any fraction by the, uh, the, the third on the bottom, like we've done here. Okay, so for the final part, it says write down the single matrix that represents a rotation of 45 degrees anti-clockwise about zero, zero, followed by a horizontal stretch of scale factor square root of two. So essentially, um, we've got these matrices here, A, B, like this, A, B, and C. And you can see that in this example, they've done B, applied B to C, and then A to the result of that. Okay, and A to whatever the result of B, C is. Okay, but if you were to say, um, can you find the single matrix transformation which represents both of these transformations, then you're going to need to see what the matrix is that you apply to C. So we want to put A and B together. So we need to do this in a different order. In other words, we need to ap apply A to B and then whatever the result of this is, apply to the coordinate point or the matrix C. So it's just a matter of doing the multiplication in a separate order. And in this case for part D, we just don't care at all about C. We're not interested in the particular point. We're just interested in the combinations of transformations. Okay, so essentially you just need to do A times B. And I'm running out of space here, so I'm just going to cheat a little bit. So um, not this one. What am I looking at? So if we have a look down at this, you can see, there we go, they've done you like a times by b and they've applied the square root of two zero zero one so the horizontal stretch to the rotation anti-clockwise by 45 degrees um, i'm not going to do that one you can do it on your calculator or you can verify that one yourself but there you go that's how you make combinations of transformations okay so next question so example eight This one here it says find the two by two matrix that will transform the points two one to one four one minus three to four nine and you could come up with more points there if you wanted to but they only come up with two so let's just try this one here so we've got a two by two matrix which we're looking for we can call that a b and c d and we're going to apply it to well you could apply it to 2, 1 to give you the answer of not 4, 9, 1, 4. So you could do that and come up with two simultaneous equations there. But I'm actually going to do everything at once here. So I'm going to say that applies to 2, 1. And also it applies to the coordinate point 1, minus 3 to give us the answer of 1, 4, and 4, 9. Okay, now that's going to create four simultaneous equations which we can solve. The two of them in terms of A and B and two of them in terms of C and D. So we'll get out here 2A plus B, this times this, giving us this. So that gives us the answer of one. And then we'll also get AB times this, times the one and the minus three and sum together, which is gonna give us the four. So that's uh, a minus 3b equals to 4. Now that's this 4 up here. And then we've got cd times by 2, 1. So we've got 2c plus d gives us this 4 here. So we're just doing normal matrix multiplication now. And this times this give us c minus 3d then giving us this answer of nine. Okay, so we've got two simultaneous equations there. You can solve them in very similar ways. 
um, and you can work out what A, B, C, and D are, and you're done with that question. Let's just look what the book does. There we go, you can see, see what it's coming out with there. So they've come out, if, seeing as they've done things as sep two separate coordinate points, they've came, come out with the A and the B and the C and the D equation separately from the, the two um, matrix equations which they've set up and then they've combined them. Okay, so you can see what they're doing and they're just solving two simultaneous equations and they're coming up with the matrix there. A is one, B is minus one, C is three and D is minus two. Okay, now you could use your calculator to solve systems of um, linear equations as well. You allowed your calculator in all exams in this course. Okay, well that is done. There's another investigation at the bottom. And I'm not going to do that now, although these investigations are pretty good. If you've got time there, it's a good thing to do. And there's another little box here at the end, which I'm just coming across now. It says the, uh, the area of the image is equal to the, the magnitude of the determinant of, of t multiplied by the area of the pre-image. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Well, that's a, that's a formula I'm not going to go into now, but it's an interesting investigation. I might do that separately. But there's another formula there which we may need to use in these questions. So the area of the original image is equal to the determinant, um, the magnitude of the determinant times by the area of the pre-image or the object, if you like. Okay, now remember determinant, let's see where that's given to us in our matrices in the formula booklet, way up. Here we go. It's here, okay, so there's your determinant of A, is A, D, take away B, C. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. Um, I'm, as, as I said, I'm not gonna go into that one right now, but that's an interesting extra result which you may have to apply. Um, you can see that that's actually not given to you in the formula booklet. Okay, guys, well, I'll let you get on with the exercises and the investigations there. So it's 9E next, and you've got there a total of 13 questions that go on, 13 questions then. In the next exercise, they're talking about translations as well, so involving translations on top of that. Okay, well, thanks for listening, and good luck with the exercise.